Hello guys, so welcome again. So this short video is mainly about how to implement the stateless descent method. So uh, what I will do is to start by importing uh, the SymPy and the math libraries. And uh, among the SymPy uh, package, I will import symbols function, the differentiation and the evaluation. So I'll define the two variables, x1, x2, and the step, which is s, as symbols, which are real. And the function I will need to optimize here, you can change it if you wish. But here in my example, as I've uh, talked about it in the previous video, I'm trying to minimize f of uh, x1, x2, which is x1 minus 2 squared, plus x1 minus 2, x2 squared. So this sets the function f with the variables x1, x2. I'll display f. I'll differentiate using the differentiation function from SymPy. I will differentiate f with respect to x1 and x2, and I'll display my derivatives. So here they are. Then I'll talk about the algorithm. So first of all, I'm defining the number of uh, iterations I will process here as 10. Well, you can change it, or you can set a terminal condition which is different. For instance, that the gradient becomes very, very small, less than some epsilon, or that improvement, the improvement in uh, f is very, very small. So I will list also uh, x1 and x2 and initialize as zero uh, entries. And these will contain the values of x1 and x2 after at each and every uh, iteration. And I will initialize the first elements to be x1 of zero, which is zero, and x2 as zero, which is three. And I'm initialize that's the step size, just in case the solution of the differentiation here of uh, the g function of s with respect to s is, is not obtained. So I'll, at least I'll have one, uh, one, one value to, to iterate. So let's enter the main loop. So this is the main step of the algorithm. So our for, for i in zero to size, so I'll stop at size minus one. What I will do is that I will evaluate the derivatives or the partial derivatives of f with respect to x1 and x2 at the given point, which is here basically when I start 0, 3. Okay, so I need the substitution function here from SymPy. And I will use these values, f1 and f2, to substitute them back in the f to obtain the g function, whereas here is the symbol as we talked earlier in the previous uh, command window. So I'll substitute x1 by x1i minus s times f1, and x2 by x2i minus s times f2. So now the g here is a, a single variable function. I'll display it, and I will compute its derivative with respect to s, and I'll display it also, and I'll solve the equation where the derivative of g with respect to s to zero, and I will take these solutions in back. Val here is usually obtained as a, a simple list. So I'll display it and I'll try to iterate through val here in a way that I'll try to get only the S that is positive and uh, that is, is satisfies some requirements. One of the requirements possibly is that among the solutions to the fact that the derivative of G is equal to zero, I will pick the one that gives the least value of G and that is positive. So that's why I'm setting this small loop where I define min g as a very large value so that I will use it in my loop to update and pick the minimum value. So for j here, going from zero to the length of val, length of val, what is it? It's the number of solutions I got to dg equal to zero, derivative of g equal to zero. If the value at position g is j is larger than zero, then I will substitute with this value in g to get the value obtained. And I will compare it to min g, such that if it is less than min g, then I will update the best index obtained and the min g obtained. This way, after the loop, I'm supposed to get the solution to d derivative of g with respect to s that it has the, uh, that 
sets S as positive, and that has that gives the least value for G itself. Now I will check only for uh, second order condition part purposes. I'll check the second derivative of G with respect to X and to S, and I'll make sure that is positive. So I'm sure that I get a local minimum at least. And with the previous step, I'm pretty sure that's the absolute minimum. So this is what I'm doing here. So I will make sure that my list is not empty. First of all, I'll obtain with the value obtained in index here previously. I'll evaluate the second derivative. And if this second derivative is zero, it's okay. Then I will enter it in the step size um, I'm using for this iteration. So SI here, so initially S zero would be the value at the index I obtained. I'll display this and I use them to update X I X uh, one at I plus one, X two as I plus one for the next iteration. So X one at I plus one is X one I minus S I times F one. And X two at I plus one is X two I minus S times F two. And this way I will update and iterate uh, uh, in order to find the global minimum for this function. At the end of the loop, what I will do is just, I'll display the best solution thing. So what you have in front of us is the printout of the, uh, of the, of the trace of the algorithm. So first of all here, this is the, after the first iteration when it starts from zero to three, this is, I'm displaying here the, uh, the expression of G of S. This is the derivative and this is the solution obtained here when I set gs equal to zero. So here, this is what is used to, 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 to update the values of x1, x2. So after the first iteration, these are the values of the, uh, of the, of the values. Okay, and I will see after the first iteration, these are the values of the variables. So basically this is the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, this, the s found. And this is the value of g of s I'm displaying as of um, here, okay? I'm making sure that the second derivative is, is positive too, okay? So now this is for the second iteration. So after a couple of iteration, you will see that we converge quite rapidly, well, in less than 10 iteration to the solution, which is at the end displayed, which is two, one, okay? So the code is pretty much clear, I hope you, have some uh, if you have any question you can just post a comment thank you very much